What's up guys, this is Jeff from Evans Performance Academy. We're gonna be doing a quick comparison video, taking a look at the differences between a G4 Plus and a G4X standalone system from Link Engine Management. I've had a lot of questions from students over the last year as to what the differences are between the Plus and the X. I wanted to just do a quick video here highlighting some of the key differences and some of the programming differences because they are different. A lot of people think that they're exact same thing. It's going to be the next evolution of the G4 Plus moving into the G4X. So we wanna go and see what those differences are going to be, what you're getting for your money. Let's go in here and do some split screen comparisons so we can get an idea of what we're finding the differences between the Plus and the X systems. All right, so let's jump in here and take a look now at our software differences. I wanna go and highlight the G4 Plus and the G4X software so we can see them back to back, just going through some comparisons here in a split screen type of format. The first thing I wanna talk about is the G4 Plus software. It's on the left side of the screen. G4X software is on the right side of the screen. We're gonna find, if we're comparing the two, the look and feel of the software is very similar. So we'll find if you've used the G4 Plus, you'll have a leg up getting into the G4X because it's gonna have that same look and feel. The keystrokes and where you find everything is going to be essentially the same. There's not a whole new learning curve. Now I do wanna mention the software is slightly different and the layouts don't necessarily carry forward from our G4 Plus into the G4X. So that painstaking process of creating very detailed layouts is something that you may have to go through in our training course for the G4X and the G4 Plus, we provide really detailed layouts that's gonna be streamlining the tuning process to get you up and running very quick, but that is something to note if you're going at tuning the G4X um, without taking our training course, you will have to go through and create all of those layouts. The next thing I wanna talk about is the processing speed and the response from the G4X compared to the G4 Plus, but this is something you can actually feel the way the engine is running. So when we're talking about the processing speed, if we take a look at something like a transient event, we're gonna find both, we have our split screen going on here. So again, left side G4 Plus, right side G4X. As I'm blipping the throttle here in this demonstration, if we pay attention to the actual injector pulse width, and what's going on here, you can see how much quicker the G4X is responding as I'm having throttle inputs, which is going to be giving us much more accurate fueling, which will make the engine run much smoother. So the G4X is able to process many more commands per second, which is gonna be in turn giving you more accurate fuel and spark timing delivery to the engine. Anything else that is gonna be using a, a higher processing speed, such as closed loop control, idle control, boost control, variable cam control, among many other features and functions, will respond much quicker and you'll find you'll have a much more accurate type of control in that closed loop format. So the G4X wins hands down here in terms of performance on an actual engine. The next thing we wanna talk about here is going to be the onboard data logging performance. This is where we have light years separating the G4 Plus and the G4X systems. The G4X can go in and have 100 times more sampling rate compared to our G4 Plus. So if we look here in our split screen, we'll find the highest sampling rate that we can deal with on our onboard logging for a G4 Plus is going to be 100 hertz or 100 samples per second. If we're taking a look at our G4X, we can sample up to 1000 hertz or 1000 samples per second, which is a substantially faster logging speed on any given channel. Not only can we log at a higher sampling rate if we choose to do so, and that's all flexible and configurable in the software, we have a lot more logging space. That means you can log at a higher rate and being able to log substantially more channels. So if you're dealing with a drag car or a track car and you're coming back into the pits and you wanna have data capture to be able to capture as many channels as possible, the G4X system will give you that flexibility to have all of the logs captured properly with all the channels that you wanna see, which is tremendous for doing any kind of diagnostic or troubleshooting or just making calibration changes or updates of the car as it's going around track. Now, on that topic of our onboard logging, I do wanna talk about the download speed. We'll find that the G4X system will download the onboard log about 16 times faster than the G4 Plus. We can do a quick demonstration here. So both onboard logs are captured at the highest sampling rates at the maximum channels for three minutes on my test bench. And we'll find here, when I go to do the ECU download log from the memory, we'll find as we're going through this demonstration that the G4X is almost finished 
before the G4 Plus even gets a quarter of the way finished with the download. And we're finding the G4 Plus is still going through and downloading that. So you can get the idea. It is substantially quicker. This will save you time in the pits, being able to get into that data log, dig in and figure out exactly what's going on to make your updating changes. We all know in a racing environment, time is definitely money and time is also critical to be able to figure things out and get back on track so you can win the race. So the download rate is pretty substantial in my opinion for working with the G4X. So now we covered some of the physical differences in the G4X and the G4 Plus in terms of performance for the response for the processor and the onboard logging and the download speeds. Let's talk about some of the programming differences. This is getting in some nitty gritty that for a tuner can make quite a bit of a difference and make your life much, much easier using the G4X compared to the G4 Plus. So the first topic and first thing I wanna talk about here and compare is the VVT or the variable valve timing feature. If you're dealing with a Honda K20, a 1JZ, or even AVCS control on a Subaru engine, the variable valve timing is something you're gonna to have to integrate with to get the most out of your engine performance. So when we're dealing with the G4X system, we have the ability to work with something called calibration mode. That's going to allow the link in the G4X system to figure out all of the details for where it starts its control from for the variable valve timing feature. This is something that was not present on the G4 Plus and there was a bit more setup time and configuration on the G4 Plus. So that's gonna be saving you a bit of time, getting your engine fired up and running and getting the variable valve timing sorted out very quickly. The next thing that the G4X has in the software for programming is a cold compensation that's going to allow the variable valve timing to be able to compensate for the oil pressure or the oil viscosity not matching what it would be on a warm engine on, on a warmer oil temperature where the viscosity is thinned out. That's going to be improving the variable valve timing control in those warmed up period or the warm up periods when the engine oil is going to be relatively cold. Um, the next thing is going to be the auxiliary output. The aux outputs can be assigned for any VVT function um, on the G4 Plus systems that was limited to specific aux outputs. So that's a really nice thing with their outputs, a lot more flexibility within the programming in terms of the VVT control. The next thing that we want to talk about here is going to be the closed loop lambda control, which is something I use quite frequently. We'll find with the G4X systems, we have the ability if we have a V6, a V8, V10, V12 engine, so we're dealing with a banked engine and we're dealing with two lambda sensors. We have the luxury and the ability to assign each lambda sensor to each bank that's associated with, and then we can actually set the closed loop control up so it will trim that specific bank to that lambda sensor, which is a huge deal on the G4 Plus that wasn't present. Another huge leap that they have for the G4X system is we have an uh, introduction of a long-term fuel trim that was not present in the G4 Plus, which allows you to have this long-term aspect. We have a short-term adjustment and a long-term adjustment. The long-term will absorb what the short-term is doing over time. That improves your fuel modeling. You can use, and use that for allowing you to go back into your VE table and update it or your main fuel table and update it based on what you're finding in that uh, closed loop long-term control. We are able to extend that long-term control into banked so we can have long-term one and long-term two for each bank. Again, you can go back in and use that for data to be able to update all of your fuel, uh, fuel tables. So that's something that's really, really nice feature that I have gotten into working with on some banked engines. The next thing I want to talk about is going to be the knock control because the G4 Plus system was only having the ability to do spark retard. When we're dealing with the G4X, we'll find that it has the ability to do fuel, spark timing, or the combination of fuel and spark. We also have a new mode called a normalized mode, which is going to be taking a look at the overall uh, pattern of the knock sensor output and looking for any kind of high spikes as the engine is running, which simplifies the knock control. Um, Either way, when we're dealing with the G4X with the faster processing speed, it is a substantial improvement on the knock logic and knock control compared to the G4 Plus. So it's gonna be something that uh, you're definitely gonna notice when you start to deal with the G4X system. The next feature I wanna talk about here is our math blocks feature. This is something new to the G4X that opens up the possibility for custom strategies within your programming and control. Let me go through a couple examples here so we can see how the math block feature is gonna work. So we're gonna go in here to the software. Um, let's jump over here. I'm gonna go over to my custom page that I've labeled here, math. And then here we find our math blocks. Math block one, we're gonna set this up for map over EMAP. This will give me the relationship of the map pressure sensor versus the exhaust manifold pressure sensor. We have to add an exhaust manifold pressure sensor to do this. 
First here, we're gonna enter a parameter A as our map pressure. Parameter B is gonna be set up as our EMAP, which is set up as a general purpose here on my uh, test vehicle. So we're gonna go and select that. It allows us to go into the equation here and write an equation. We're gonna do A divided by B, map over EMAP. Now, we can carry that forward here if we jump into our fuel page. We're gonna go into our main fuel table and we're gonna go and re-index our TPS main and get off alpha N and set this up as our Y axis on that math block. So we go in here to the math, go to map over EMAP. We can now reset our axes here for map over EMAP as a terms of a percentage of efficiency. This allows us to now tune and calibrate a turbocharged engine and compensate for any kind of elevation changes we're finding so we can see what that's going to look like. Now it hasn't been fully configured, but you'll get the idea that we can use a math block to create a custom strategy right into our fuel modeling that something that Link doesn't necessarily have right off the bat. That's just gonna be one example. Let's go through another really quick example here. So our next sample here is going to be using a math block to integrate a Lambda failsafe or an air fuel failsafe. Let's go see how this is gonna happen. Let's go here to our math. We're gonna go into our math block too. And the label here, I'm gonna be calling this my Lambda failsafe. Now my units are gonna be an air, air fuel. So let's go here to our parameter A. I'm gonna type in Lambda and I'm gonna be looking for my air fuel Lambda target. That's gonna be the target we wanna run at. Parameter B, I'm gonna be setting this as my Lambda one sensor input coming from my wideband. And then I'm gonna do a simple equation here. We're gonna do A minus B. So we're gonna be comparing the two of those. We go to our safety here. We go to our general purpose revometer one, we'll set that to ignition cut, click yes here. And then we'll go into our table. Now we're gonna reconfigure our parameter here as an ECT. We're gonna change that to that math two channel. Let's jump down here to math. Let's go into our math two. And this is gonna be set for the lambda fail safe. Now my units are in air fuel here. So what we're gonna find here, I'm gonna put a value at negative two, one at negative one. And we'll do one here at negative 0.5. Looks like it's not gonna take that. Let's do zero. And then we'll do one at one, and then we'll do one here at two. Now what this is going to be is the offset or the difference from the commanded air fuel to the actual air fuel. So if I'm one point off or two point off, that's gonna allow me to configure this. Now I'm gonna go into the X axis or the Y axis here, configure that for map pressure so it can be very, very specific how we apply this. Zero, one, and two, I'm gonna set this to 10,000, so that's not gonna be a limiter. Zero to 100 in the map pressure, is gonna be set to 10,000. And then uh, in my 140 to 180 here, this is going to be set at 3,000. So if I'm negative one or negative two, that's gonna be the indication that I'm a point or two points leaner than my target air fuel. That means that I'm going to be applying this temporary rev, rev limiter in that situation because I'm in boost getting leaner than my target. So there's something wrong, I'm off, and I need to go and shut down the engine so I can run it and I don't have to worry about running in those lean conditions or those uh, unsafe conditions. So this is just gonna be another example how we can create a quick strategy with our math blocks. There are so many possibilities with the math blocks. Again, this opens up the ability to integrate all kinds of custom strategies that Link wouldn't otherwise be able to implement for your race vehicle. So you don't have to wait around for them to create firmware sets. You can do this right off the bat, it gives you a ton of flexibility. So another really neat feature with our G4X systems is going to be any extreme or plug and play box or fury box has a built-in accelerometer. This is kind of an Easter egg that's hidden within the actual board design. And this allows us to actually have an onboard accelerometer. So we can see what our lateral, vertical, or longitudinal acceleration is going to be. We can figure out braking G-force, cornering G-force, or acceleration G-force. What this allows us to do is for logging purposes, being able to figure out all kinds of details on track. So a road race car, autocross car, we can figure out all of our G-forces. Now for drag racing, we can use the accelerometer's reading, specifically in our longitudinal X acceleration here, that's gonna be our acceleration G-force, to determine how the traction control can be implemented on a variety of different vehicles. Now, if you're dealing with an all-wheel drive car and we're taking a look at traction control, traction control is gonna be comparing the front and the rear wheel speeds together. So when we're looking at just the comparison between the driven and undriven wheel speeds, it's a little bit difficult on an all-wheel drive car to come up with a good traction control strategy. If we jump into traction control, we actually can integrate that acceleration rate here into our axis. So if we go here and click X, we jump up to the parameters here and we go in to our actual parameter section and we type in here accelerometer, type in Excel here, we can jump into the, the longitudinal acceleration rate, which is gonna be our uh, forward acceleration rate. We go to initialize axis. That's gonna to start to populate some negative and positive G-force acceleration rates in here. You might wanna go a little bit higher than this. 
maybe put up to something like three G's into our acceleration rate, depending on what kind of vehicle you're working with. And then in the Y axis here, we can populate that to some form of a speed sensor reading if it's all wheel drive. We can jump down here and go into our driven wheel speed, for example, click OK, go to initialize axis and create a three dimensional table that's going to be allowing us to put a percentage of slip based on what the acceleration rate is going to be, also based on what the speed that the vehicle's traveling is going to be. So when we launch an all-wheel drive car, we'd like to see the G-forces be relatively high. They will start to fall uh, lower and lower as we start to go down the track in a drag race type of format. But we can find that we can actually base a traction control here uh, based on this longitudinal X acceleration rate, which is going to be right from the three axis accelerometer, which is really, really nice. It's going to uh, streamline the traction control process for an all-wheel drive car and we can utilize those onboard sensors. So those are some of the larger differences taking a look between the G4X and the G4 Plus systems. Now there's more programming differences and we're taking a look at something like our input or output control, traction control, launch control. We have more programming flexibility, more options in the G4X, so it is gonna be just a superior software that's only gonna get better in time as more software and firmware updates are released. So we'll find the differences will grow even larger. If you're considering upgrading from a G4 Plus to a G4X, definitely go ahead and do it. From a tuner's perspective, it is a much better end product and your engine will run better with the G4X. Um, if you're looking at considering an engine management for your race project, the G4X is an excellent option. It can't be beat at the price point for the motorsport features and the way it will run your engine. So it is up there with all of the other top options in terms of engine management. That's gonna be wrapping it up here, taking a look at our comparison video. I do wanna mention that Evans Performance Academy has two different training courses, one each for G4 Plus, G4X, or about 30 to 50 hours in total length. We run through all kinds of various topics. We cover everything in great detail. We provide custom layouts. We even have a private support forum. So if you get stuck in calibrating your own vehicle, you'll know exactly what to do. So definitely check that out. I'm gonna be leaving the uh, in the description below the video here, I'm gonna be leaving links to both training courses so you can go check those out for yourself. That's gonna be wrap it up here. I'll see you guys now in the next video.